So in this project, we will be taking a look at and wiring Montgomery Vector Elevator Buttons. Now these I've had a lot of requests to do, so I'm very excited to make this video. This video will be different than my other Montgomery Vector video because these two pieces are original and complete, full with circuit boards and original components. The other one I had to make my own parts for, so that was more of a custom project video, but this one's going to be more of a detailed look and wiring. So with that, let's get started with the detailed look. So first is the terminal call station. Now this particular one would have been on the top floor, and that's quite obvious because it is a down, and it has an access key switch. So taking a closer look, up on the button, each of these buttons are the same, there is the label, in this case the down arrow with the braille. In the middle is the light bar. And then on the right is the button. And the buttons have a interesting shape because there is this small ledge here, which is part of the button that presses down. And I think the main idea behind that was for better visibility of the light bar. Because if the flat end here was all the way up against this, you wouldn't be able to see it as well if it was on the side like this. So I think that's the reason why it's like that, which is kind of neat. Down here for the key switch, this particular one is an access. So this is what would be used for inspection. If I place the key in here, it's spring loaded for up and down. So nothing too exciting to see there, just a basic key switch. So as for the intermediate, it is very similar to the terminal. There are the up and down buttons. So again, there's the braille, the light bar and the button. Same thing for down. This one is in better shape than the other one. Just kind of comparing the two together. The arrow is much more filled in and it just overall looks a bit better. And the button is not as rounded out either. You'll notice on the button over here, the corners are a bit more rounded out, whereas on the intermediate, they are much more square. Another thing you might note is down here on the bottom where there should be probably a key switch, there isn't. There is just this filler piece that was added in so not a big fan of that, but I guess it is what it is. So now let's take a look at the backs of these pieces. Taking an initial glance on the back, you'll notice a lot of similarities between the two. Obviously the one with the key switch has the key switch on the bottom. But as for the circuit board, if you notice really closely, these are actually the same. They are the same board. However, if we turn to the side, you'll notice that the terminal button has all the components on the top where S1 is, but it's empty down on S2. And on the intermediate, both S1 and S2 have the components. So when we get to the wiring of these buttons, I'll take these circuit boards off and we'll take a closer look at them. However, before we do that, I have to do a little bit of work on these buttons. So the button here on the left is going to the elevator museum, and we obviously like to have the most complete pieces on display there. Since there's no key switch here and I don't have any replacements, we have decided to move the access key that's on the terminal to the intermediate. Now that doesn't really make a ton of sense because generally the access key is going to be on the top or bottom floor, but this is for display purposes, so having the access key on the piece that will be in the museum makes more sense for display reasons. Now something a little interesting about Montgomery Vector is the way everything is put together. So the key switch itself is being held on with some hardware, which I'll take that all apart and this should come apart really easy. However, the actual key switch itself is being held in with this washer that is pushed against this plastic. So I'm not really sure exactly how I'm going to remove this. I'm going to give it a try and then tell you what I did to remove it, but it seems almost kind of like a one and done kind of thing where you slide this metal piece on and it holds it on. But hopefully this will all go well and I can transfer the key switch from this panel to this panel. This one will be pretty easy because it's just a nut and a bolt, so I'm not too worried about that. But if we also take a closer look at the other ones up here, it's the same idea. It's these washers that hold the braille in place. So removing this piece was actually a lot easier than I thought it would be. All I did was take a hammer and just take a nice whack at this bit here. About two hits, it came right out. So the removal was a success, but this here is what the ring looks like. Here's the washer, hopefully it goes back on. Kind of looks loose, but we'll see what happens. Now as for this here, this is going to be really straightforward. Loosen that up and pop it out. It's just a small piece of metal and slide that in. Looks kind of weird to see access on an intermediate, but it is what it is. And we're gonna pop this washer back down. 
that hopefully will be good enough. I put the key switch back together. And I will say this, this key switch is really annoying to take apart and put back together. Just a, a fair warning. Okay, my key switch transfer has been a success. The access key is now on this piece, and it looks really good, actually. Now, unfortunately, this one looks a little bit more sad, but we still have two really awesome pieces here. So with that done, it's now time to begin with the wiring. So I'm going to remove both circuit boards from these panels, show you what each one looks like, and then show you how to hook it up. So I've removed one of the circuit boards, and I have the other one taken off as well, but I'm holding it to the back for an interesting reason. So if you look at the lights on Montgomery Vector, you probably notice that it has kind of a bit of a yellow tint to it. Well, if I remove the circuit board from behind it, you'll notice that yellow tint goes away and it is now clear. And it looks quite interesting with this clear piece in the middle. And if I turn to the back, this is what it looks like. So there's the clear piece in the middle. And here's what the button looks like. If you want to see more about the actual button itself, I showed a Montgomery Vector button replacement piece in my other video where I built my own call station, but this one's just held together like this. But if we take a closer look at the circuit board, you can actually see right now where that yellow color comes from. It actually comes from the light bar itself. The light bar is a Stanley MU07-4101. Unfortunately, I have not been able to find this piece anywhere online. So these are these are quite old and obsolete. And it's one of the only light bars that is this length. A lot of them are a lot shorter. So the light bar itself simply just plugs into this piece on the circuit board. And it sticks up far enough so that when the board is up against here like this, the light bar is pressed up against the back of the lens. As for the other components, here is the contact part. This is the actual switch. On the side of the switch, this is the model of the switch. I've been able to find these switches online, so replacements are available. There's a diode here and a couple of resistors. So since this is the board from the terminal call station, there is only one set of components. So you can actually see down here where the other components would go if this were an intermediate. Which brings us to the intermediate button. And you can see this is the exact same circuit board as the terminal, it has the same number and everything on it, except obviously this one has the second set of components. The only real difference on the bottom one are the resistors are just a bit closer together because there's also the plug on the back. And that brings us to the plug. So on the back, there's L1A, SS1, 2, and 3. And I haven't done a complete trace of all of the one, two, and three, but the main two ones we will be focused on is L1A and SS. That's the two that we care about. And that's actually going to be the same for both a terminal or an intermediate. So I don't know what the exact rating voltage wise is for this without any modifications. I haven't really calculated anything and I really don't feel like it because the main question I have is, can I stick a nine volt battery or a double A battery pack on this and make it work? So the quick answer to that is no, we can't just use a nine volt battery and there's a reason why. So this light bar itself actually has five individual LEDs in it. It's not just one big light bar. Each of the LEDs on this are wired together in series, which means across each LED, we are dropping about two volts, just to keep it simple. So if we have five LEDs and two volts, that means across this, we will drop 10 volts. So we need at least 10 volts to power this thing. However, these resistors are too large and prevent the amount of current we need to light up this LED bar to its full potential. So my solution is to add another resistor in parallel with these two resistors to create an effective lower resistance that will allow 12 volts to run through it. Let me give you a quick example. I'm currently powering the board with 12 volts and don't worry, I will show what the connections are on the other side. This is just a quick example. So this top button has no modifications to the circuit. The bottom one 
I have added a 100 ohm resistor in parallel with the existing resistors. So if I press the button for up, you'll notice that the LED bar lights up, but not that much. You can't really see that. Honestly, if I just looked at it like this, it looks about the same. Now if I press the down button, you'll notice that this one lights up very bright. So the reason why this works is by adding in this 100 ohm resistor in parallel with these, the overall effective resistance has been reduced. And by adding a 100 ohm resistor in with 12 volts, it is creating just enough current to flow through this where it won't burn this out, but it lights it up at full brightness and it looks really good. So that's why it's important. You can definitely see the difference between them. And I think I would much rather have the bottom one than the top one. So with that, I'm just gonna take this all off and let's get to how to actually wire this up. So wiring these buttons is actually going to be really easy if you want to power these with 12 volts. First things first, you'll need a 100 ohm resistor and then you'll need a 12 volt power supply. So I'm using just a plug-in one that I have, but ideally you would want to use a battery. So there are 12 volt batteries out there that you could, you could pick up, but the actual connections are the same for both the intermediate and the terminal. So the positive is connected to the SS and the negative is connected to the L1A. And that's all there is on this side. So with that, you will get this type of result. But as I showed before, we don't want that. That's way too dim. So time to make the modifications. Whenever doing anything with the circuit, you always want to kill the power and make sure that there's no power left in it. So we're going to add in the 100 ohm resistor and we're going to do that by adding it in parallel. So you can actually do this without permanently modifying the board either. So if you take the resistor and slip it in between here, you can just simply wrap the ends around and you might need a small screwdriver to really get it to wrap around, but just wrap the pins around each end and make sure it's really tight. So you can see here, mine is on here nice and tight. Make sure you have tight connections. You might wanna do two or three wraps, which wouldn't hurt. Again, this is if you want to do this without permanently modifying it. If you don't really care, you can just solder these pins on here and you'll be good to go. But I'm doing this in a way where it's not actually going to permanently alter the board. So I'm just gonna wrap it around two or three times just to make sure there is a good solid connection on here. So if you look closely, you can see that I have wrapped this end around very tightly. I'm going to repeat the same process on the other side. Again, this is just to ensure that this will not come loose and fall off. If you solder this on here, you don't have to worry about that because you have actually connected it to the metal pin there. And give it a press. You can see that it lights up. So I just have to repeat what I did down here on this one. So I've added the other resistor and now they both light up at the full brightness. Okay, I've got the circuit board back on and when I press the buttons, you can see that they light up and it looks really awesome. So that is one of two buttons complete. So now I'm going to do the exact same thing to the terminal button. And you can see here, I've already added the resistor. So again, it will be just put this back onto the button and power it up. So I made sure my resistor was secure and hooked up the power. And this one works too. So just one additional detail about these buttons. This here is one of the back boxes for a vector. And on the top of the circuit board is this metal bar. And what this does is it kind of latches up in there like that. And you slip it down here and put the screw in here. And that's what holds it onto the box. You can't remove the top because that metal piece on the circuit board prevents it. But I don't have the little screw bit here right now or a 12 volt battery. So that's why I was using my power here because I don't have a 12 volt battery, but I am gonna pick one out at some point and hook it up into this box and put it together. And this will be our piece on display in the elevator museum. So anyway, that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed taking a closer look at Montgomery Vector and seeing how it all works and how to wire it. This was definitely a lot of fun. So thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you on the next project.